Okay, uh, in this video we're going to go over conversions, what they are, how to do them. Um, we'll go through three different example problems and then look at the biggest mistakes that are made with easy conversions. Okay, here we go. Okay, so today we're gonna to look at conversions, easy conversions, all right? Um, just an intro. So what is a conversion? It's, it's really easy. A conversion is just you're converting between units, okay? Um, a really easy way to think about this is if you're talking about the temperature outside and you say, gosh, it's 40 degrees outside, depending on where you are in the world, that means something very different, okay? So if you're in the States, uh, like I am, 40 degrees means, well, it's either chilly or really freezing, depending on where in the States you live, but it's cold, right? It is not warm at 40 degrees outside. However, if you live anywhere that uses Celsius and not Fahrenheit like we do, 40 degrees is ridiculously hot. Um, 40 degrees Celsius would be very hot. So depending on what unit you use, Celsius or Fahrenheit, 40 degrees is very different, okay? So again, all you're doing with conversions is just converting between units. So if I had, um, you know, something, let's say it was like 40 degrees Celsius. Okay. That's really hot. That's like the equivalent of 104 or 105 degrees Fahrenheit, 40 degrees Celsius, 104 degrees Fahrenheit, all I'm doing is changing the units when I convert between units, all right? Um, another easy example to kind of conceptualize is if you've ever traveled, okay? Um, if you've ever been lucky enough to travel overseas or to different countries, you would know that you have to convert your money, right? So again, assuming you're starting in the States because that's where I am, okay? Um, you could have the same amount of money, right? Let's say you had a hundred dollars, okay? I suppose that would go on this side, all right? So you have a hundred dollars. What does that mean if you're traveling and you have to convert those dollars into pounds, okay? So if you're going to the UK, you'd use the British pound, okay? You'd still have the same amount of money, right? It's not like the amount of money you have changes, but your units are changing. So now you only have, in fact, 80 pounds if I was going to convert between dollars and pounds. Okay, still the same amount of money, but it's just a different unit you're using. Okay, if you were traveling to Japan and using the yen, you would actually have 109 yen. Okay, again, same amount of money, just a different number because you're using different units. You get the idea. Okay, if I was going to change it into euros, 90 euros, okay? Same value of money, different units that I have to convert to, okay? So, there you go, conversions, all right? So, what is the big idea with conversions? The big idea with conversions, and it's really easy, okay? All you're doing is you are converting units. That's it. If you're just doing math. Okay. Exciting. All right. You're just converting units. You're switching from one unit to another. Okay. And there are three easy steps. So step number one is you always start with the given. Okay. You start with whatever value the problem gives you. If the problem gives you a hundred dollars, that's what you're starting with. Okay, you start with your given. Step number two is you set up a blank conversion. All right, that'll be really important. We'll do all these later, okay? But step one, you start with your given. Step two, you set up a blank conversion. And step three, you do math and you check 
three units. And that's it, okay? All right, so that's the big idea, okay? You get whatever the problem gives you, you use the given that it gives you, you set up a blank conversion, and you'll convert away from the original units, you'll convert to the new units, and step three, you just check your math and check your units, okay? Let's actually do an example. An easy one to start with. Boom. All right. So easy example number one. Okay. If you spend six and a half hours every day sitting there at school, not bored, of course, doing your work. Okay. But you spend six and a half hours every day. How many minutes is this? Okay. Step number one, start with your given. So you write down 6.5 hours. So what you were given in the problem. Step number two is set up a blank conversion. Okay, so a conversion is just like you're multiplying by a fraction, basically. Okay, so you're going to have a numerator and a denominator. Okay, now I'm currently in the units of hours. I want to cancel out the units of hours and get into whatever the problem is asking me. It's asking me to convert into minutes. So if I want to convert out of hours, I'm going to put hours on the denominator so that these guys will cancel. And I want to put minutes on the numerator to get into the units that the problem is actually asking me to find. Okay, so this is setting up my blank conversion. All right, I need to get out of hours and into minutes. And hopefully we all know that there are 60 minutes in one hour, right? It's a different color. 60 minutes for every one hour. That's your conversion rate here, right? 60 minutes to one hour. All you're doing here is it's now you just multiply. Okay, um, all right, step three is you just do your math and check your units. So here we go, 6.5 times 60 divided by one is 390. And now I'm in minutes because hours and hours cancel out and the unit that I'm left with is minutes. Easy money, okay, this is an easy problem. Hopefully that makes sense, okay? Number two, also relatively easy, okay? Uh, a standard basketball is 24.5 centimeters in diameter. How many inches is this? Okay, so if I have a basketball and I wanna know how many inches the diameter, I don't know. We try and make problems not super boring, just like convert this number to that number, put it in some kind of context. You don't care anyway, right? But okay. We'll, we'll convert a basketball, okay? So I start with my given. Step one, start with my given. 24.5 centimeters, okay? Now I wanna convert away from centimeters and get it into inches. So set up my blank conversion, get out of centimeters, get into inches, okay? Um, hopefully you won't have to memorize these conversion rates Hopefully they'll be given to you like on the back of your periodic table or something, okay? Um, but the conversion rate is one inch is 2.54 centimeters. And honestly, in chem, you might use that one so much, you'll just have it memorized by the end of the year, okay? All right, and now I have set up my blank conversion. I've, I've actually put in my, my ratio, okay? And now I just do math. Okay, slightly trickier, slightly, because now I actually have to divide, okay? And this is just this is just basic math, right? You have a number here, the number on the numerator you multiply by, number on the denominator you divide by. So in your calculator, you'd type 24.5 times one, if you need to do that, and then divided by 2.54. If it's on the denominator, you divide by it. Okay, so centimeters and centimeters cancel, and 24.5 divided by 2.54 is 9 point something, 9.6 inches. Okay, a centimeter and centimeter canceled out, and I'm left with the unit of inch. Okay, make sure when you're doing your conversions that you actually write out 
what the final units are. Okay, don't give naked numbers. Don't give your answer as 9.6 nothings. What is this? 9.6 elephants? Who knows? Okay, so please make sure no naked numbers. Definitely put your units that you're converting into. All right, before we go on to the next one, really quickly, all right, the biggest mistakes that are made with these kind of problems, okay, is two things. Thing number one is you would set it up 24.5 centimeters and you won't pay attention and you'll say inch centimeter and you'll screw up and instead of saying 2.54 centimeters is one inch you'll accidentally flip these and you'll say 2.54 inches is one centimeter which is not true okay so please pay attention to where you're actually putting your numbers in your conversions the other mistake that is made Okay, so this is mistake number one, don't do that. The other mistake that would be made, 24.5 centimeters, is you'll use the correct like placement, but you're not, again, paying attention. You'll put centimeter up top, inch on the bottom, and you'll say one inch is 2.54 centimeters. So that's the correct conversion rate. But now you get an answer in centimeters squared per inch. Right? You're not actually canceling out your centimeters anymore. You're not getting into a new unit. You've, you've just not been paying attention. Okay, So these are the two biggest mistakes that are made. Either you're not paying attention to which unit should cancel out, or you're flip-flopping what the rate should be. All right. So don't make those mistakes. Okay. Last example, which is a multi-step problem because why not okay so uh, if you are sewing a blanket that is 108 inches long okay you don't go to the store and buy fabric in inches you buy fabric in yards so you might need to figure out if I need 108 inches of fabric how many yards do I actually need to purchase at the store okay the only reason this is tricky is because it's a it's a multi-step problem okay so if I start with my given, right, step one, start with my given, 108 inches, oh, we're using purple now, mm -hmm. all right, I need to get out of inches in my blank conversion. I don't know the direct ratio of inches to yards, right, it's asking me to convert this into yards. I don't know, but I know inches to feet, okay. And then I can set up another conversion going feet to yard. So I can do two different conversions, all right? And I know it's 12 inches for one foot and it's three feet for every one yard, okay? Now, inches and inches will cancel and I'm in feet but feet and feet will cancel, and now I'm in yard. Okay, so it's just a multi-step problem. Sometimes you have to do two different conversions to actually get into the units that the question is asking you to find. Okay, 108 divided by 12, we're on the denominator, right? The number's here on the denominator, so you're dividing. So 108 divided by 12, divided by three, should be three yards. you'd need to buy three yards of fabric, okay? All right, so the big idea is all you're doing is changing unit, one unit to another type of unit, okay? Um, you'd still have the same amount of fabric in this example, right? 108 inches is three yards. It's not like the, the amount of fabric you have is different. It's just what way you're describing how much you have. We convert all the time in chem all the time in science, so you have to be super solid with conversions. It's just multiplying by a fraction. You got this.